PS4 Pro not turning on. The culprit of the issue might be a defective power supply. Uh, if your PS4 Pro is not turning on, uh, there's no beep, there's no sound, uh, and the console doesn't turn on at all. In most cases, it's a, a dead or defective power supply. Now, this uh, could be caused by a number of different things, including a surge, uh, overheating sometimes, uh, sometimes due to bugs or insects, or in most cases, cockroaches nesting in the power supply, uh, and then eventually it blows up the power supply um, because the, the insects uh, can cause shorts, uh, that's a very common problem we see, especially from our American customers. Uh, so, uh, if you have a roach problem in your house, or uh, you had a, a elect an, an electrical outage or a surge recently, um, and your PS4 is not turning on anymore, you most likely have a dead power supply. We sell these on our website at www.fasttech.ca and I'm going to put uh, a link in the description uh, for all current PS4 Pro models in the description box. So do check us out if you need one. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this repair on your own at home. Uh, we also sell the, the screwdriver and the tools that you need to disassemble your PS4 Pro. And I'm going to put links in the description for that as well. Uh, and also uh, I'm going to put a link at the end of the video uh, for the power supply. So let's get started. Right under where it says Sony, it says model, it says CUH7015B. Um, and that is the model number of our console. I'm going to put the co corresponding power supplies for each model in the description box. Um, so a CUH7015B model console would use the power supply. Uh, by the model of ADP 300 CR. This is a fast tech original power supply. Uh, as you can see, this one is a model ADP 300 CR, and that is for a CUH 7015A or CUH 7000. Uh, and for a CUH 7115 or a CUH 7100, uh, the model number would be ADP 300 ER instead of a CR. So ADP 300 ER for the newer PS4 Pros, CUH 7100 and 7115, A or B. And I'm gonna put link, corresponding links in the description for these. Uh, so do check us out. So this is our power supply unit. I'm gonna zoom in. Um, I'm, I'm gonna bring this cl uh, closer to the camera so you guys can see it. This is the power supply unit. This is what usually fails if you have a power related issue. In certain instances, it could be a motherboard related issue as well. But in 99% of the cases, if your console is not turning on at all, it's, uh, it's a power supply issue. Uh, and again, I'm gonna put a link in the description so you can buy it directly from us. So let's get started. So here's our PS4 Pro. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the back here of the console, okay? Uh, and we're gonna remove the hard drive cover, which is right here. You can stick your finger in here, and then just lift, and then this this piece will come out. Okay, we're gonna put that to the side. Then we're gonna see these three torque screws here. There's usually stickers that cover these ones here, but I've already removed those stickers. Uh, they used to be the warranty stickers, but now due to an FTC ruling, uh, if you remove these, your warranty is not void. Uh, they'll have to explain to you or at least give an explanation on why they're voiding the warranty just based on those stickers being removed. And that is uh, the case since I believe um, April of 2018. Uh, anyway, so we're going to remove these three Torx T8H screws uh, we, we're using this T8H specialty screwdriver, which we sell on our website. I'm going to put a link in the description for that as well. A standard T8 will not work. So we're going to remove these screws. Just one. Two, three, okay. Once we remove these screws, we can lay the console down like this. We're gonna remove the bottom cover by, by pulling on the back and lifting. And it'll come out like so. And then we're just gonna lift it and get it out of the way. Okay. So now if you look uh, on this side here, there's two screws that hold the power supply in. These two screws here, 
Uh, they're Torx T8 screws as well. So we're gonna remove these. It's this one here and this one. Okay, once those are removed, we're gonna flip the console over. And now we're gonna remove the top cover. And we can do that by sticking our fingers in here and then lifting on both sides. And then the top cover get, comes off just like so. Okay, this is the power supply right here. This is what we're uh, replacing. There's five screws that hold it in on this side. There's two Torx T8 screws, which we're gonna remove. And then, actually there's five Torx T8 screws. Two of them are long ones, so we're gonna remove these. lift the, the heat shield up. This is also a grounding plate, I believe. I'm gonna lift it out, get that out of the way. Okay, now the power supply should be free. So we're just gonna lift it from the front, like so. Okay, and then at the front here, there's gonna be a connector right here. This is the connector, okay? You're gonna wanna to wanna to be careful with this. You don't wanna break this cable. So what we're gonna do is grab the connector and then wiggle it and pull. And this connector is gonna become undone. We're gonna lift our power supply out like this. Okay, that's our old power supply. Okay, and this is our new power supply that we're gonna install. Uh, this one includes our warranty sticker and includes a warranty. So do check us out. I'm going to put a link in the description for this. Um, and we sell these on our website. We ship worldwide. Uh, so do check us out. Okay, so we're going to install our new power supply. Same way we removed the old one. We're going, to, uh, we're going to put it in place. And then we're going to connect the connector here at the front. Push it in. We're going to make sure this cable doesn't get caught. Push it down, like so. We're gonna reinstall all our screws back in. Okay, then we're gonna reinstall the heat plate or the grounding shield. We're gonna flip it over, install the two torque screws that we removed. There's one here. And one here. Okay. Then we're gonna install the base back on. Install the bottom cover. Okay, the front goes in first, so this this side's gonna go in first from the front. Okay. Like so, and then we're just gonna angle the back. Front goes in like this. And then we're just gonna make sure that these, these line up here. And then push everything in, and you're gonna hear clicks, and then that's when uh, everything's in place. Install the top cover. For the top cover, the back goes in first. So this side is going to go in first. This side, we're going to put it on, angle it, and then just push till it clicks. Now we're going to look at the back of the console. We're going to put our Torx T8H security screws back in. Okay, now finally, we're gonna put the hard drive cover back on. This side goes in first. 
and then you just push till you hear a click. We're gonna put our Fast Tech warranty sticker on here because this customer is getting a warranty. Okay, now I'm gonna test the console to make sure it works. Let me plug it in. Press the power button. Oh, and there you go. Looks like it's turning on. And uh, there you have it. And it's working good now. It was not doing that before. Was not uh, The light was not coming on at all. Uh, so now it's fixed and uh, it should be it should be good to go. Once again, don't forget to check out our website if you need any of the parts, the power supply, uh, the screwdriver, or any other tools required to do this job at www.fasttech.ca. And don't forget to comment on our videos, like our videos, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, and we'll catch you in the next one. Once again, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you want to get notifications. Don't forget to check out our website at www.fasttech.ca. And uh, don't forget to like and comment on our videos. If you have any questions, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get back to you. Uh, I can't get, we can't get back to all your comments. We try to reply to as many comments as humanly possible. Uh, and again, I'm willing to answer questions, uh, but I, I can't answer a follow-up question and a follow-up question and a follow-up question. So if you are looking for free advice and if you're not a customer, with customers, I don't mind answering 20 questions uh, if, if that's what you need. But if you're, uh, if you're just looking for free advice, uh, I will only reply uh, once to each comment. Uh, and that is just because I can't, I can't keep answering uh, questions uh, on the same issue. And most of the times people ask questions that I've already answered in the video. So uh, from now on, it would be one reply per comment or per question. Unless, obviously, the only exception being if you're a customer. If you're a customer, and, uh, do provide an order number in the comment section and I'll get back to you quicker than anyone else.